stuff. The whole pandemic thing was tough. It was tough as on my parents. My parents in their 80s, so they're in that population of people they kept telling us we had to watch out for, you know? They weren't allowed to leave their house. We had to stop by and bring them food and check on them. Every time I stopped by, my mom would just complain. She was so bored. She was bored. That was the worst thing that came out of a global pandemic for my mother. Boredom. So she got on Facebook. And that was the worst thing that came out of a global pandemic for me. That was the worst day of my life when I got that friend request. The longest I ever took to make a decision. That little red one sat in the corner of my screen for five weeks. Every time I logged on, I was like, ooh, not today, Mom, not today. I've been posting shit about her for 10 years. She thinks we can just become friends. She calls me up one day and she goes, you know, I invited you to be a friend on the Facebook. I was like, oh, did you? Well, you got that shitty internet connection, so it's probably taking a while to get to me. She goes, oh, is that how it works? I was like, absolutely, that is how the internet works. She got an email address too. She was real excited about that. She was emailing everybody. She calls me up one day. She goes, oh my God, I forgot to tell you last time I saw you. I got the cutest email, so I added you to the list. I was like, you did fucking what? You did what? That's like the first rule of the internet. You don't just add people to lists. She's like, no, no, it's perfect for you. You're going to love it. The next day, I started getting the emails. She added me to a Bible verse email list. Yeah. Bible verses every day get sent to me. And I know they weren't intended for me because they're always Jesus-heavy Bible verses. That wasn't meant for the Jew named Israel, you know? So after like five weeks of nonstop Bible verses, I was like, all right, that's enough. And I hit unsubscribe and I immediately felt guilty because I was like, maybe I should have been reading this shit just in case, right? Like what happens if I die and I get up to heaven and I'm like, this is it, heaven, I made it, it's amazing. And I look across the way and there's Jesus. And I'd be like, ah, shit. And he'd be like, hey, Kevin, I'd be like, hey, Jesus. Listen, can we avoid this awkwardness and just kind of let me in? And he's like, sorry, buddy, no can do. You didn't live the right kind of life. And I'd be like, Jesus, how was I supposed to know? I didn't know what I was doing. I was brought up Jewish. And he's going to be like, bro, I was emailing you every single day. So I am Jewish, and my name's Kevin Israel. Someone came up to you after a show once and goes, Kevin Israel, is that your real name or is that your stage name? And I was like, yeah, because when I was choosing stage names, I decided to go with the Jewiest name possible. It was Kevin Israel or P.P. Habinowitz. And I went with it. Here's a funny thing though, the family name wasn't even originally Israel. It was originally Israelovich. My great-grandfather got here right before World War II. He was at El Salvador filling out a little book. He decided to change the name to make it less Jewish. Yeah. So he changed it to Israel. I would imagine right around May of 1948, he looked at the newspaper and I was like, shit! We're all gonna know! Trying to Jew down your name by changing it to Israel? It's like farting and trying to cover the smell by shitting your pants. 